That's totally fine. Just just grab mine, stick it on the counter, make sure you turn the light on for them, and keep an eye out. That way the dogs don't go too ape shit. And I'll eat when I'm done. Okay. I'm also out of cream. I meant to go to the store today. No biggie, babe.
What's up, Gorilla Army? A little bit of incense. A little bit of Tool Remix. A little bit of coffee. What's going on? Happy Friday Night Live to you. Smash the fuck out of that like button. Smash the fuck out of that heart button. Comment. Let me know you're here. I'm going to pull us up on the phone. So I can keep track of the comments. You guys ready for an interesting conversation tonight? Are you ready to have a conversation tonight? Awesome sauce. Who's on? Who's on? You know what? If you're watching this, post your gorilla tag in the comments. Got a gorilla tag? Better have a gorilla tag. You're going to need one. Post it in the comments. What's up, Linda? What's going on, Tanya? Bill? Quasi? Edwards from Trinidad, awesome sauce. What's up, Jeff? Trish Leto. <clears throat> Always ready. What's going on, Kevin? Howdy, John. Awesome sauce. Queen Gorilla's in the house, the PTSD Gorilla. Hey, hey, awesome sauce. You got a Gorilla tag? Post it in the comments. Smash the fuck out of that heart button. Do it to it. Let me get a piece of briar and some tobacco. Hmm. How am I feeling tonight? I think we'll go with a mix. What up, Mark? The bald gorilla's in the house. Bill Savage. Gorilla Viking. Awesome sauce. Van Life Gorilla. Sweet. Cool. There were a bunch of people that posted in the event that said they weren't going to make it tonight. What's going on, Angela? You guys been paying attention to what we've been doing this week? You know there's a new treasure hunt coming? You paying attention? Are you watching? What's up, yo? Jaden's in the house. Kate, what's up? What's up? Put your gorilla tag in the comments. If you're new here or your newish hair here, hair, newish hair. If you have newish hair, this is not newish hair. And you're not quite sure what this group is and what this group is for and who this group is really suited to and all of that. That's going to be a conversation we're going to have tonight. And in the process, we're going to learn a little bit about relationship building and what that actually means, what it entails, and why you should kind of focus on it when it comes to getting clients. We've had some of our, uh, some of our people that have been in our course and our world for a little while start posting some things lately, the last few weeks. It's just a little fun, this group. Yes, it is, Katie. What's going on, Justin? Hang on to your gorilla. What's up, Jackie? Jay Marino's in the house. You got a gorilla tag? Post it in the comments. Do you has a gorilla tag yet? If you have one, post it in the comments. If you don't, you need one. What's up, Joe Rutland? How you doing, brother man? Jeff, you already got to level three. You know what's funny about that? Level one and two aren't actually complete and in the, the group yet. It's an interesting thing, this creating a orientation sequence 
marketing, traditionally it's called an indoctrination sequence, right? But that's, that word has some connotations that aren't really what we're going for. Orientation seems a little bit more accurate. Um, the way that you have to do it in a group that's already active because of the linking structure on how you have to do that, you basically build it backwards, right? Some of the stuff that's going to be in the new version, we've already got created in the group. Some of it's currently part of the treasure hunt. Some of it's new, right? But to get the bulk of the stuff done, I needed to go in and create a bunch of videos. There's probably another eight or 10 posts that aren't in the group yet that are and will complete the treasure hunt. It'll be done and complete by the end of the weekend and there will be a big push towards the end of the weekend and then through next week to have everybody go through that new treasure hunt. We're gonna do this for a couple of reasons. Really, because I couldn't find one, two was great though. At least the one I watched, yep. <clears throat> Onboarding, yes, Linda, I like that. Farm Grill is in the house, awesome sauce, cool, cool. Do you guys know why we do the treasure hunt? Do you guys know why we're, hmm, it's the best way to ask this question. Do you know the reason for the treasure hunt? I'd like to hear your thoughts. What's up, Daniel? Daniel, Danielle, Daniel. A new treasure hunt. Yeah, Joe, dude, where you been? We've been talking about it all week. Guess what? Ooh, let's see here. Guess what, chicken butt? Ain't no thing but a chicken wing. Qualifying, correct? Yep. So we don't get stuck with douche canoes. <clears throat> Ash, if you're watching, can you can you bump the heat down just a hair? Just a hair. Just a touch. What's up, Nikki? Get people to know the culture. That's part of it. So people don't come in here and wave their wang around. Yep. That's part of it. To qualify. Yep. I've been working to live and living to work. Awesome sauce, man. I hope that's going really well. Pre-qual. Build. Yep. Qualifying. Yep. Cool. Okay, cool. So check this out. <clears throat> Facebook group is all about community, right? That's why Facebook developed Facebook groups is because they want to promote the community thing that can be built with people globally. And there's a lot of there's a lot of reasons for someone to have a Facebook group. There's a lot of reasons for somebody to be in a Facebook group. We're marketers. We also do sales and I have a very interesting style when it comes to that. And this main group is for the last 12 months, it's really been about you come into the group and you find out if this is a place that you want to hang out. We've started doing some other um, marketing, if you will, outside of the group to bring people into the group we're going to get more specific about who we bring into the group. Part of that treasure hunt thing is to quickly qualify them, make sure that they are actually in the right place, but get them up to speed on what we do here, how we do it, why we do it the way we do it here, what they can get. And here's a, here's a little extra thing that I haven't thrown out there yet. Um, the treasure hunt in and of itself is a course, a full blown course on how to go get clients and build relationships. And it's free. You got to put the time and the effort into going through it. Right. But that's how we're going to market it outside of the group to an extent. Um, we're moving the free line. If you don't know what I mean by what I just said, moving the free line, post it in the comments that you don't know what it is. I've got to watch some Doctor Who tonight. I'm not sure how long I can stay, but I love you all. And I will watch later if I zap off. Awesome sauce. Gorilla traps. I love it. Be very, very quiet. He's hunting gorillas. Fucking A, Batman. Style points. 
tell rules, get people involved, build Facebook interest for the person so that their feed fills up with groups posts. Um, actually, Jeff, I don't know if you caught the video. I think it will be the last video in the treasure hunt. I actually go through and, and show how to shut off all of the notifications for the, there's probably 12 to 15 posts in the treasure hunt where people will comment and stuff. For those of you that are like, you make it through that, you decide you want to stay here. I don't want that shit in your feed. I don't want those posts in your way, right? So I walk through a little way to shut off the notifications and I show everybody that goes through the treasure hunt how to do that. And then the last thing in the treasure hunt will be a link to one of the documents. It's not in there yet, but it will be with a list of all the posts that the comments and the notifications are on right? Because there's some of them that are not turned on. So they never, you never see them. Like once you saw it once, you don't ever see it again, right? That's kind of the point. I want to get everybody that's interested in being here, here to be interested in being here, right? Meaning I want to keep all the crap out of your way, right? Facebook groups and the gift posts and all of that stuff, right? It's cutesy. Hmm. We're going to have a daily recess post and it's going to be post a GIF of blah, 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 if you want to. And then everybody that wants to on that comment of yours on that daily recess thread, that can be the thing. So you can turn off the fucking notifications to that whole thing and get it out of your way. I don't know about you, but I'm all about quality over quantity, which means to me, I don't want to have to wade through 18 fucking giant, huge, no value posts to get to the stuff that I actually want to see, right? Yeah, this is my group. It's our group. It's our, the council group, and it's our group, all of us. There's stuff in here that I learned from. I'm not getting a whole lot of market research done on you fuckers while I'm having to go through, post a GIF of your, you know, whatever your day was like, right? Awesome. Please come into the group and ask your question. I don't know if you guys saw the post that I did. I did it intentionally. Steph even commented on it. There's like this whole little extra section of comments down there. I did a quick little post to see what kind of response I'd get. And all you fuckers that went and commented on it put a fucking gif. Awesome. Not what I was looking for, but what I figured I'd find. Okay. <clears throat> yep. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a little difficult for me to paste all of the comments. So if you've got something that's awesome sauce and I miss it, repost it. What's up, Nick Tilly is in the house. <clears throat> yeah, Joe, those posts aren't going to fly anymore. And what's interesting is, is I see, I see the, the viewership starting to drop. That's good. That's real good. There's 2 billion plus people on Facebook currently. I don't want all those people in my group. Let's call it there's a million people globally that would be our ideal client avatar. I don't want a million people in this group. Let's say that if we really narrowed that million people down globally to 100,000 people that are really our ideal target market for what we do, meaning the people that we want to hang out with. Okay, cool. Check this out. If there's 100,000 people out there that are perfect for this community of ours, realistically, there's eight or 10,000 people that are really our perfect target market that we want to work with. They obligate us with money to then us help them get a result, right? But I don't want 100,000 people in the group because that's just bananas, right? So what is it that we're doing? Well, for the last almost 12 months, we've been building a very solid foundation with a very event evangelist group of people that really dig our world so that now when we go out into the world and start running paid traffic, we have a giant, really hardcore group of people that know us, like us, love us, trust us, and really dig what we're doing. It's kind of the point right? 
I want this group to be a place that we all really enjoy being and hanging out. And what that means ultimately for you guys is us doing a really good job on the front end to keep all the fuckery out of it, right? For those of you who have been watching the videos that I've done this week, there's a couple of topics that we ain't going to talk about in here. It's not that we can't or we're weak or I'm not good enough at. No, I don't want this group to be anything other than the perfect pool of our ideal client avatar. Many of you won't buy our course and we're not going to jam it down your throat because that's not how we roll. But by interacting and communicating, we're going to provide you and continue to do so a fuck ton of awesome sauce. And we're going to create a group that's safe for you to be open and vulnerable so you can feel good about being here learning and, and getting what it is that you need. Some of you are going to go, cool, I think I know what's around that corner and I can't see it, but I think you guys can get me around that corner and I want to get around that corner faster. Where do I put my money? Awesome. Perfect. We're not relying on this group for that, right? That's way secondary. That's the cream on the top. We do paid traffic to get our clients and that's where we're headed. This group is so we can really get in tight with who our ideal client avatar is and better understand them, better understand what they want, better understand what they need so we can provide that. And a lot of that means is that, you know, we're going to, we're going to test some things and not all of those things work. If you've been around for six or eight months, you've seen some things that we've done that eh, didn't work so well. And so we changed it, right? Test, adjust, test, adjust, test, adjust. Make sense? Hang on a second. I need to mute. Cool. Awesome sauce. 36 people. Hey, if you're watching and earlier you weren't here and you didn't put your gorilla tag in the comments, do that. Please. Every one of y'all ought to have a fucking pen and paper out. These FNL broadcasts land in his fucking genius and he's constantly dropping knowledge. Thanks, brother, man. I really appreciate that. Oh, FYI. You guys, 90% of you are fucking awesome sauce. 9.9% .9 of the rest of you are really close. And there's just a couple of people in here that are really not cool. That's going to be kind of the deal. We're dealing with the general public, even though we've really kind of narrowed it down, right? Um, most of the people that are in our group, almost all of them, actually have a good intent and they actually are coming from a place of trying to be a good human and out of the hundred percent of the people that are in here honestly I'd say about 20% of you have it on lockdown on how to operate in public and then I'd say another 60% of you have it like if it was a b c d f I'd give you like a b b plus right you're almost there and then there's a percentage of people that just really don't know any better, right? So if you've, if you've really been watching the way I operate, two months ago, I was really hardcore about the people that came into the group and just like spammed. They came in, they fucking threw up their link. They're like, I'm here. It's fucking huge. Oh my God, you're going to like it without ever even looking at a post, right? And I would annihilate them publicly. There for a while, we had Ash grabbing those posts and we would boot them and then put them up on the wall of lame, right? But if you've watched over the last, really the last couple of weeks, it's drastically changed. And the, the month or so previous to the last couple of weeks, I began that change. Why? Because we started to grow super fast. And as much as we would like people to come in and look around and like, scroll through 10 or 15 or 20 posts and really get a read on what's going on and how things are done here. What's the vibe? Most people don't have the patience to do that. Oh, it's a group and the logo looks rad. And based on that, I'm making the assumption that 
They want me to like run through the front door, never meeting anybody and whip it out and start waving it around. They just don't know any better, right? Our job as the group leaders, the group owners is to continue to make adjustments to where once people get into the group, they're like all the way up to speed. So for those of you that are watching how we're doing stuff, because you're going to implement this shit in your own business, there's two or three big pieces that are coming that we haven't even discussed publicly that are going to be part of that process. And if you could hear that, that was my son. He must be drinking soda or something. Um, there's a lot of information in this group. There's a lot. I've shown you guys the last couple of weeks is this has just been absolutely going nuts. There's 158,000 post comments and reactions in the last 28 days. That's absolutely fucking bananas out of a group of less than 10,000 people. Bananas. And really, about 60 or 70% of that is really good, high quality info. But for those of you that we want to like find a home here and really enjoy having this place in your feed, we want to keep the fuckery at a minimum. And the fuckery is not just the people coming through the front door, whipping it out and not knowing that, yeah, dude, awesome sauce, but they're all lesbians. And so, like, Right. When you do that, when you walk into a group or you walk into a networking meeting or you put yourself in somebody's private messages and you do that, you can never take that perception of you and how you did that back ever. Right. First impression is huge, especially if you've got something to sell and you actually want somebody else to buy that. So we're going to take some steps over the next few weeks to make it less fuckery in your feed. Why would we do that? Can anybody tell me in the comments why we would do that? Why would we restrict what people put into our group? Like above and beyond just like self promo and dropping their link. It's really funny, like total side story. There's somebody that a couple of us in the Gorilla Council, <laughs> Hansel, yeah, dogs are gonna go apeshit for a minute. Um, there's somebody that the council, several of the members of the council follow and that person gets really bent out of shape about groups that don't allow like open self promo and link dropping and stuff. And then like over the course of a couple of weeks of us following this person to see if it's somebody that we want to build a strategic partnership with those of you who know what we do, right? There's a reason that we would step out and do that. All of a sudden that person's Facebook group is like every post has to be approved by a moderator. Hmm. Screw the nine to five last year, closed down a group of, of almost a hundred thousand people. 60, 70, 80, whatever thousand people, a bunch. There was like a Facebook group exodus. Why? Because those groups get so big and so big and so big and they're not regulated to keep it quality that it becomes so quantity over quality that it's like there's zero fucking value in it for anybody. So they have to close it down. I'm quality over quantity. And if that means that I leave some dollars on the table, I'm totally okay with that. Totally okay with that. There's 2 billion people on Facebook. I can sell all the courses that we want to, right? Paid traffic. We can do that. Our group, right? Not everybody that comes in goes through the treasure hunt. Oh, this is amazing. This is fucking awesome. That's even brilliant, blah, blah, blah. And they're around for two months, really hot and heavy. Not everybody that does that's going to stay, right? We keep getting the question internally and externally, like what's the sweet spot? Really the sweet spots, 95 to 98% of the people that are in the group being active and everybody in it for the same end goal. Let's all be here, respect each other, act like adults and get as much value in and out of the group as possible. Question, do any of you have a problem with that? 
super high engagement, super high involvement, super high amount of value and quality for you and your life and your business with as little fuckery as possible. Do any of you have a problem with that? <clears throat> Dennis, Landon, do you attend events often? No. I'll tell you why here in a minute. You've definitely built a tremendous tribe of fans, including me. Cool. But as our group icon leader, how do you grow individually? How do I grow individually or how do you grow individually? Dennis, I'm going to watch, I'm going to watch for your response. Jeff, I understand that problem, brother, man. Yes, me. How do I grow? Okay. Um, it's interesting. This question comes up in a couple of different ways on a fairly regular basis. I am, I am very cyclical, right? I will go through this for a period of time and then I shift and then I go through that for a period of time and then I shift. And what I mean is, is I go through a period of consumption and then a period of digestion and then a period of implementation. Um, I'm 40. I've been heavily like passionately and almost obsessively involved in personal development stuff, mind stuff, spirituality, personal development stuff since I was a little kid. Like my mom was some woo, right? Astrology and numerology and tarot and, you know, like the secret wasn't a secret when it came out. Like um and like to some depths of that in some different areas, um, how do I grow individually? I go through a process of consumption, digestion, and then implementation. And I do it on, on several different levels, um, mentally, psychologically, spiritually, and then relationally. And that's, those are the three areas that I kind of focus on. Does that answer your question? Um, I don't do the whole raw, raw motivational thing. Like I look, I like Tony's message. There's other people that are in that space that I like their message. Um, not really my thing going to like marketing events and stuff like that. I don't like peopling like music is one of my favorite things. And I'm not really big on going to concerts anymore because there's just too many fucking people. And here's the thing. It's not quality over quantity. And so you get out into public in 15, 20, 50, 100,000 people, even 2,000 people. And the, the level of social acuity and how to deal with being around other people is so not even thought about. Like, cool, you bumped into me, no big deal. You knocked the coffee out of my hand and it's all over my pants and my feet and you didn't even turn around and say, excuse me, like, I know not all of humanity's like that, but the vast majority are. I would say 50% just don't give a fuck. Another 20 or 30% really just like have zero clue how to deal with other people. I hope that answers your question. Makes sense. Love it. Thanks, man. Can definitely relate. I have struggled putting too many eggs in one basket. I'll focus on one thing for too long and miss out on other opportunities. Here's, here's another thing um, that goes along with that. I get asked a question on a regular basis. What are the best books or what books do you like? Or I haven't read a, like from cover to cover, I haven't read a book and I can't tell you how long. I get a printed newsletter from a copywriting guy monthly. And every time I get it, I read it because it takes me 20 fucking minutes. I get my content through watching people on stage through YouTube because I've got my chair, I've got my pipe, I've got my own coffee and the bathroom's right there, right? And I can take my dog, I can put it down and I can go take the dog for a walk and I don't gotta go out of the state. Um, and I will, I will binge on somebody for a day or two Right. And like, that's where my total focus, my total attention is at. And I will go through 
what I consider to be a section of their life where they were really on fire about a specific thing. And I will gobble up as much of that info as possible. And then I will sit on it and digest it. And then what rings true to me, I turn around and implement. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. I'm going to go through these comments real quick. I don't even like saying good morning to the ladies at school when I drop, drop off my kid. Totally get it. Like introvert or like, I mean, even if it's just, I'm actually an asshole and I just don't like humans in general. Like, I don't know what it is. And honestly, I don't really care. I don't go out of my way to not be nice. And I'm always as courteous as possible, but we're moving out of Denver because there's too many fucking people here. Like I want to go live in nowhere. And then when I want to go people, I can go people. But like, I want to walk out on my front porch and take a leak and there's nobody there. Right. I don't want to hear the neighbor's stereo. I don't want to hear the neighbors fighting. I don't want to hear the kid doing 90 miles an hour through the, like, there's too many humans on this planet. Don't get me started on that. Okay. Let's get back on track. Peopling LOL. That's a good one. Yeah, totally. That's what we call it. Peopling. Are we all marketers? Are we all business owners? Quentin, welcome. Uh, Tanya asked, did you go through the treasure hunt? Um, I am still unsure as to what this group is all about. I'm watching this live stream to see if I can finally figure out what's going on. Okay, Quentin, check this out. Perfect. Thank you for the question. Let me break this down for you. I and my counsel, Mark John Ash, and then we've got a, a tight-knit outer group of about 30 people that are really entrenched in our world, all want to help people who do a craft. We want to help them impact all of the people that make sense for them to impact. I don't care if your craft is selling fucking roller skates. I don't care if your craft is, you know, high quality designer, whatever. I don't care if your craft is helping somebody with a, a mental or psychological breakthrough or weight. Like I don't care. Coach, consultant, service-based business owner. I don't give a fuck if you help people clean their house. If you want to learn how to spend your time focusing on that craft and working with your clients and figure out how to build an inbound lead generation system that weeds out all of the people that you don't want to deal with and all of the people that don't want to buy the thing that you do so you don't have to spend your time on that activity prospecting. Okay. That's what we do here. That's what we talk about here. We talk about marketing and sales and I'm really careful with all of you new people. When I say we talk and teach and coach about sales because the vast majority of you a don't actually know what that means and B don't want to learn how to do it in a non fuckhead kind of way. I'm a 15 year sales guy, six, seven figure deals. I hammered the phone two to 300 times a day for a long period in that. And I learned how to do like Grant Cardone had just come out of really only being a car sales training guy when I was forced to go through his training. And I told my boss at the time, if you make me go through this, I will quit. Like I went through six or seven weeks of it and I was like, and at that time I was still in the sales fuckery mindset where if you stayed on the phone long enough, you bought. I can do that. I can teach that. I grew a conscience. I don't want to teach that. And for the people that actually understand what sales is and actually understand that it's really relationship first, my agenda of taking your fucking money further down the road, right? relationship first, long-term, long game, actually helping you do a thing, not pushing you to make a decision like a sales guy. Um, yeah, we do really awesome sauce sales training stuff. But Grant Cardone, Ryan Stuman, like there's a bunch of people out there that teach sales. The group that we recommend for sales is business, not bullshit. Now, if you're really interested in the higher, finer points of sales, then by all means stick around. But if you come into our group and you haven't looked around and you post a thing about cold calling or cold emailing, 
I'm going to make you dance in public in a dress because you couldn't take the time to like figure out what we're all about. Like this is my message, right? I hope that kind of makes some sense. I want to help people get clients. I want to, I want to help people learn how to build relationships. I want to teach people the actual finer points of this peopling thing. So when they do find themselves in a situation where they need to have a sales conversation, the person on the other end goes, wow, this is fucking awesome sauce. Right? Does that make sense? Okay. What's up, Brenda? Welcome to Friday Night Live. Yep, 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 yep. Don't be a fuckhead. What's up, John Davy in the house? Yes, I started in a boiler room type car place. Cool. So check this out. For those of you that are new, there's 38 people watching this right now. For those of you that are new and you're going, okay, cool. He's a sales guy, but he's teaching about marketing. And like, he told me like, we don't want to talk about cold calling. Let me, let me quickly in less than 30 seconds, break it down for you. Um, chef nights, weekends, and holidays and little kids got into sales. I started on the phone weekdays, four to 8 PM being paid under the table by a mortgage broker guy, okay? I did some car sale stuff that same year in the previous summer. I got good at that thing over the phone, getting leads for this mortgage broker. I became full-time in the mortgage world. Then I went into real estate investments, four and a half years, and then I saw the crash coming, like a year and a half out, and I was like, this isn't gonna last, this isn't gonna work. So I got into corporate finance, boiler room style, they would hire seven people at a time, and within 30 days, six of those guys were gone. Within another 30 days, nine out of 10 of those one guy that was left were gone. I did that for 10 years. And we're talking, it's like full-on boiler room because it started as collections, as a sales guy. Not on the collection side, but that's where I got my start, okay? full-on boiler room. I can mind fuck you into buying anything you want. In fact, there's a sales kid in our group that posted a comment that his mentor could talk somebody into murder and then talk them into turning themselves in. I was the guy that taught people like that mentor how to do that. But I grew a conscience and that's not really the right way to do it. And forget all of that, the people that we want to serve want to pay more to learn a skill set. And that skill set is, Landon, how can, you, how can you help me figure out how to get my perfect for me clients while allowing me to focus my time on my craft? Meaning, once they really understand what sales is, it's a big, long, drawn-out process of prospecting to find the little pieces of gold, right? And the sales training that's out there is the shortcut, little magic phrases that close those weaker people on the phone, which are shitty clients. Landon, how can you teach me how to get clients that are my perfect clients chase me so I can focus my time on working with my clients? They pay more. They pay more attention. They implement they take action and it's a really easy, quick process. That's who our ideal client avatar is. You want to talk cold calling? If you're actually a legitimate salesperson and you want to learn how to fucking crush it, I do coaching. You can hire me to coach you to do that and I will teach you all of the non-fuckery stuff that makes it happen better and faster because sales is 98% prospecting and 2% conversation. And that 2% conversation, 98% of that is asking questions. And 2% of that is making the offer. Okay, cool. Bob, do you have any more questions? Nope, I'm good. When would you like to get started? Today? Okay, here's how you get started. Like this, people don't have a sales problem, they have a prospecting problem. Does that make sense? All right, rant. What's up, Rachel's in the house? Landon drops the link again. What link? The link to the course or the link to the link to what? 
Cause the last thing I was talking about was coaching and I don't have any availability as far as people hiring me for coaching. What's up, Brandon? Wow. Nice skill. Ha ha. Yep. <clears throat> it is yuck, but you know what? Here's, here's the deal. Mark and I have had lots of conversations about this. Not all salespeople came up that route meaning the boiler room and the hard pressure and the high pressure and the hard, and all. a lot of salespeople went the other route, right? They went through school, they got good grades, they went to college, they got a, a degree. They ended up working at a, at a company that paid them six figures and taught them how to be a conversationalist, taught them how to be a consultant and go out and develop business relationships. There's a lot of that. The problem is most people that are hired to do the boiler room thing, they don't have a degree. They're not qualified to start out at a six figure salary, right? And there's lots of companies that hire the boiler room style stuff. I mean, think of all the, the door knockers and the MLM stuff and right. Like miss you too, Rachel to the course. John Davy, are you still watching? Here's how we're gonna do this. The way Facebook is working these days, we are no longer going to be putting links in our group that take people directly off of Facebook. That includes our own stuff. There's a link to a certain post on the business page that if John, if John is still watching, I will have him grab and put in the comments. Um, so let's get back to the point. Wow, 42, 43 people, cool. You guys like this? If you're new and you've just recently hopped on to Friday Night Live, post your gorilla hashtag in the comments. What's up, Michael? <clears throat> Ron just dropping in to show some love. Y'all rock. Excellent, excellent in interview today, Ron. For the course. Yeah, it was dope. Dope sauce. I don't think John Davies watching anymore. Um, Katie. I will, when I'm done with Friday Night Live, I will, I will send you the link. Or you can go to our business page, which is easy. Go to, go to my profile. Actually, here, you know what? Let's do this. For the 45 of you that are on watching this, if any of you are not following me or not friends with me, go ahead and send me a friend request. Check this out. Here's a, here's a little interesting thing. Um, I'm using stories because that shit only sticks around for like 24 hours and I'm giving some, some gorilla juice, some golden nuggets, like some extra, like here's what we're doing like right now. Here's what's working. Oh my God, you wouldn't believe this. Here's what's coming. This is fucking awesome sauce. If you follow my stories, you're going to get more of that. You're going to see some of that. Also our email. Yep. I want to, market to you. I want to market to you in a way that's non douchebaggery. If you're interested in watching how we do that, there's a lot to learn by just watching how we do that. I'll also be giving you some extra gold in our email. The way you get that is by signing up for our ICA ideal client avatar workbook, which if you don't have, and you've been around for a while and you know what it is that I'm talking about, you're leaving money on the table. Cool. Holy shit balls. Cool. Um, stuff. I guess I'll have to start looking at the stories. Yep. What's up, John? Stuff. FNL is the highlight of my otherwise crappy week. Amanda, you keep working on doing what you're doing to change your situation. You will eventually find yourself in a non crappy week. Jeff Littlefield, I started my sales journey with in-person demos. <sighs> Doing the phone thing's hard enough, but when you're close enough to smell other people, here's an interesting thing. For those of you who don't really know me, I smoke pipe tobacco, right? I'm also a chef. And part of the reason that it was really easy for me to become a chef was about one in three people naturally have a much more heightened sense of smell and taste. Being around most people is really ugh. like just it's yeah. Uh -uh. 
definitely like the relationship style. I pride myself on getting people to purposefully come back to the store on days I'd be there just to see me love making friends. Cool. Now, with all of that that I've said in the last 10 or 15 minutes, I want to be really, 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 really fucking clear on something. I don't really want people in my world that are too weak to ask for the sale. Like if you're scared of it and it's just like gross and you will not ask people for money, you should go the fuck away just as much as somebody that wants to just be a complete douchebag. Like seriously, straight up. You should always be looking for an opportunity for somebody to buy your stuff. It should just be done in such a way that it doesn't come off with, here's how big and long it is and I'm going to fucking smack you with it. Right? Meaning building relationships, which means prospecting in a slightly different way, figuring out exactly who your target market is. And then within that target market, who exactly you want to work with and then figure out how to focus your time on making connections with them the right way using social acuity and positive indifference. So you can attract the people that are like, because here's the deal. We all want stuff. We all need things. We all are looking for help. In your target market of all of the people that you could help, there is absolutely a segment of people that are more suited to work with you than even the person at the top of that entire thing, whatever industry you're in, based on personality, right? Your market, people that want it, need it, can afford it, and are interested in buying it now. That's your market. Within your target market, there are people that want it, need it, are ready to get started now, and if they just knew who you were, would be madly in love. How do you get those people to chase you instead of having to try and find a needle in a haystack? Well, this is exactly what we're, what we teach. Okay. Personality marketing, using relationship funnels, using relationship marketing. Does that make sense? All right. <clears throat> What's up, Mark? <clears throat> Mark, if you can do this, I would, I would appreciate this. Um, Katie Switzer is looking for the link for the course, but the link that I want her to have is a very super short post on our business page. I posted it two days ago, I think two or three days ago. It's like super short and it's, it's got a link to the forward slash join. If you could grab that and message it to her, I would be super appreciative. Or you can just like PM her the link. You know what the link is. Yes, Michael, me too. Justin, you sold Kirby's as your first job. Oh, for one week. Yeah. Fuck that. Like, ugh, fuck that. Nope, nope, nope. Is this the post you wanted, Robert? Um, it might be. It showed up weird on, on my stuff. Thank you for doing that. I appreciate that. Do you make sushi, Landon? No, I don't. I have, but I don't. I'm actually... One of my best friends, I've got two best friends, Jason, the guy who hired me in that industry. Fuck, that's been a while now. 11 and a half years ago. That's bonkers. Um, he just quit that industry last Friday. And he, he sent me a text message today. He was like, there is nothing better than freedom in all caps. And I was like, so... That means he's either getting divorced and I know him and Jamie love each other. So that means that he told Dan to go fuck himself. And I called him and he was like, yep, I'm done. Awesome sauce. The reason I brought that up is because we're going to go on a sushi date next week. That majestic, that is a majestic beer, dude. It's not even close, but thank you. I appreciate that. Landon, your group is superior. I appreciate that. It's our group. Like seriously, you guys that are here watching FNL that are active and participate and you like get it and you help us make this group what it is, it's all our group, right? Kelly, what's up? Excited gorilla. I love that this group of amazing people is so diverse. Everyone has been so welcoming too. 
Oh, I sent you a PM with the link. Okay, cool. I'll go get it. Thanks, Mark. No, sorry, one month. Ooh. Well, that confirms I linked the right post right down there. Cool, awesome sauce. Thanks, Robert. What's up, Trish? Scrubbed pots and pans in my dad's restaurant at 12 years old. Me too. Not your dad's restaurant, though. Any of you guys remember a company called Bennigan's? I think it was Steak and Ale. They they owned Bennigan's. I was 14 and, what was it, 14 and three months, you could go get a work permit and then go to work like after school. I started as a dishwasher. It fucking sucked. God, it was awful. Sushi is your favorite food, Julia. Yeah, it's, it's totally one of my favorites. Is it come to my door, but I have two dogs. So we've been talking about this for a while and I've, I found a company that can actually make us the kind of um, no soliciting signs that I want. And we're going to have those available here and they're not going to be very expensive. We're not going to make any money on those. Um, but we're going to do something really cool and it's going to be no soliciting. And then underneath that, it's going to be, that means don't fucking knock on my door in gorilla ease or, you know, we're, we'll, we'll have a PC ish version of that because I think it would be cool. It's like somebody knocks on the door and you're like, you look at the North no soliciting sign, you look back at them and you look at the no soliciting sign and the ones that like are paying enough attention to go, Oh, I don't have anything to sell, but would you like here, check this out. You know, it's it, like, that doesn't just mean no selling shit on my front porch, you moron. Anyways. Linda, newspaper delivery sales and collections. I enjoyed the delivery part. Yep. Cool. I think I'm like way lost on the comments. LOL, since I don't own the page, I couldn't get the direct post link. I had to copy the embed tag. Awesome. I really appreciate you going and doing that, man. You, Robert, you're, you're the man. I had an excellent conversation with Robert the other day. If any of you guys do um, fulfillment, no. If any of you guys do like distribution of printed goods and materials and stuff and you're looking for an awesome sauce supplier, PM me and I will make an introduction after I vet you and make sure you're cool enough to talk with my guy because that's how we do it here. Uh, Robert, you guys still have Bennigan's? Yeah, they've closed down the one that we had. Okay. Wow. Holy shit balls. I used to get hammered at the Bennigan's. Oh, that's funny. Hamden VA. Yeah, gorilla ease means don't knock on the door. I've been here for probably a week, maybe more. Not even sure, but not that long. And I love this group and everyone here already. So much love here. Who would want a piece of who would want a piece of the jungle? Who wouldn't want a piece of the jungle? You know, Landon, I feel a bit like I did when I first joined my Jits gym. When you first start, they encourage you to bow in before you enter the mats. It fosters the sister brotherhood, but also shows respect. At first it was super weird. I actually didn't even do it for a while, but then it becomes natural and you don't even think about it. That's kind of how I feel about you guys in a good way. I appreciate that. Here's the deal. This group is like our living room, right? And those of us that have taken the time and put in the effort to build relationships and friendships, and we're all kind of operating from this place of respect for this living room, right? The carpet's white, right? There's leather couches. There's a really nice stereo system and a big flat screen TV up on, right? It's nice. And then there's people that come like, kick in the front door with muddy boots and they walk in and they take a piss right on our living room floor. Uh-uh, I don't like that, right? And then there's people that come in and they, they don't knock, they open the door nice and gentle and they come in and, and they kind of look around a little bit and then they just like go start leg humping somebody. 
I don't like that either. Like, no. And then there's people that knock on the front door and they wait for the host to open the door and let them in and they go, cool, this looks, yeah, I, interesting. And then they go look around for a little bit and they kind of like pay attention to what people are talking about and how they're talking about it and what's going on. And, oh, I noticed that one guy, he took his glass and it's hot and the glass is cold and he didn't put it right on the wooden coffee table. He used a coaster. Okay, cool. Nobody has their feet up on the table. Nobody's like, you know, got muddy boots up on the couch. Interesting. Somebody went into the kitchen and they got themselves something to eat and they didn't make a mess and drip shit all over the floor. Okay, cool. Interesting. I mean, really, this has got to fucking make sense, right? If you want to go hang out in a Facebook group that's like the dive bar down the street where people get hammered and they throw up like right there on the in the middle of the bar, right? And people are falling off their chairs and they're shit faced and you know, people are like screwing at the like if that's the place you want to hang out, then this is not it, right? You want to like sit back and watch how a master sells a $300,000 Ferrari? and he never sells shit, and you want to learn how to do that, cool, stick around. You want to learn how to market in ways that are really effective right now, but in 6 to 12, 18 months is going to be the only really effective way unless you're 15-year marketing veteran on these different platforms? Yeah. Why? Because it's all based on principles. It's all based on fundamentals. It's all based on the right way to do things, like our Facebook group here. Why do we not allow certain things, like links off of Facebook? Because Facebook doesn't fucking like it. Why don't they like it? Because the people that want to be here don't like it. Because they go down a rabbit hole, they click on a link, and they end up somewhere else, and then they're gone. And that fucking thing that I was reading that was so goddamn good, now I can't find it because there's too much info in that Facebook group. Right. Cool. We have a dog that works like one of those signs. Yeah. Yep, yep. You heard mine barking earlier if you were on at the beginning of this. Here's the link. Thanks, Mark. Mm. Pizza delivery. Holy shit balls. Yeah, but that was weird. I bet it was a fun job, but weird. Okay, okay, cool. Let me get down here. Just don't be a dick, basically. Basically, that's about right. Don't be a dick. What's up, Sarah? This ain't a, dry, a dive bar. It's cool, but not a dive by any stretch up in here. Yep, 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 yep. No dive bar. Cool. Awesome sauce. There's cute white puppies too. Yeah. And there's a couple of great Danes and a couple of big mastiffs. And yeah, when you start leg humping, they're trained to like tear your leg off. Sorry. It is what it is. <laughs> and can we have puppies? Totally. Totally. Yes. Okay, cool. So you guys have stuck around for an hour listening to me go through all this stuff. There's 40 of you here. Check this out. I'm going to give you some gold. Who here? Let's see. Let's, let's do this. Who here has a Facebook group that they're actually interested in long-term building a community and they've already got the Facebook group and it's already built post. That's me in the comments. Mark, dude, you're going to be tired tomorrow, dude. Mark's a dog guy too. Rabbits do that, John, for sure. Yeah, Linda, that was totally a fast hour. That's me, that's me, that's me, that's me, me. That's me. That's me. Okay, so there's some people in here that have a Facebook group. I'm going to give you... Um, five or 10 minutes worth of 
gold. And then I'm going to, I'm going to give some other people some gold. Now, first of all, I will tell you this, there is going to be a much more in-depth version of this for sale this next week. Okay. Our treasure hunt. It's maze balls. There's more to it than that. Okay. But I'm going to do a walkthrough training on, on what our treasure hunt is, how it works, why we did it, why we did it a certain way, how you can use it and a couple other pieces that I'm not even going to talk about publicly. Okay. There's going to be in the next three to six months, a much more in depth. Here's how to build a tribe and it's totally uh, platform. What's the, what's the right way to say this? It's platform non-denominational. If you understand that, right. It doesn't matter if it's Facebook, LinkedIn, it doesn't, doesn't matter how to build a tribe like we've done where, you know, you will get the occasional private messages. Uh, this is a little too cult like for me, right? When you get to that point, you know, you've done the tribe building thing, right? And you back off on a little bit of that stuff. Okay. Check this out. <clears throat> Agnostic. That's actually the word I was thinking stuff. Um, cool. Platform independent. Yes, Jeff. What is a sales process? What is a sales call? When you cold call somebody and you are actually a salesperson, what is that? There's steps that you go through in that conversation to get to a point where you can say, I'm going to diagnose you like this and here's my recommendation. Okay. What is that process? It's a process of introduction, qualification, the benefits, and then call to action, right? There's a process to that in every conversation, every interaction, when you're bringing somebody into your world, whether you have something to sell them or not. If you're going to build a community of Girl Scout leader people and you, your skill set is to help them have the best Girl Scout, is it packs or whatever? And that's your goal in life is to help them make that experience fucking amazing for Girl Scouts. And there's never any, here's the thing you can buy or I make blue widgets and they're $3 and 99 cents and I want you to buy them and everything in between all the way up to high ticket coaching and consulting and advice shit all the way down to, I just like this topic and I want to build a community. There's a process to orientating somebody, onboarding them into your world <clears throat> this has been done for a long period of time in email marketing. In email marketing, generally, when somebody opts into your email list, right, they're there for a what's in it for me. Yes, okay, fine. I will give you a way to communicate with me if I can fucking have that thing that supposedly gets me a result. And then good marketers will build a relationship and provide enough more interest and value for that person to continue reading that email unboarded. Right. And now they're indoctrinated, like take all of the negative connotations that you have about that word and just get them out of your head. What that means is that you brought somebody in, you allowed them enough of you as a personality to know, like, and trust you if you guys relate and then they can tell that you've got knowledge about the topic that they're looking to get info about. And they think that you're one or one of the people that can get them to the place that they want to go. Well, our treasure hunt is essentially that in a Facebook group. It's a content funnel. It's also a relationship funnel. Does that make sense? Okay. <clears throat> you do this solely for the purpose of keeping quality engagement through the roof, getting everybody that's coming in the door, as many of them as humanly possible, totally up to speed before you let them out into the population, right? We're going to basically allow people to come into the group and they are going to be caged for a period of time until they go through the treasure hunt. We're going to give them a bunch of results and we're going to teach them our way of doing things. And we're going to let them 
have enough info to decide, is this group for them or not? Before they come in and whip it out and wave it around, because here's the deal. We're building a really awesome community of people that have amazing skill sets. We fucking want you guys to work together. We're just not interested in a bunch of you having one night stands and it, it, it seems really, really cool and really, really cool. And then we did the dirty and then fuck that guy's an asshole. And then everybody in the group has to hear about it. Right? Like we don't want the drama. We don't want the bullshit. And many of you who can help somebody else, you're not the right fit for them and they're not the right kind of client for you. And the only way for us all to determine this is to slow down have some patience, learn how to interact with each other in this way of determining, hmm, if I let you put it in me, I'm pretty sure it's going to feel all right, but are we going to like each other tomorrow, right? Like, is, is there a potential for me to want to like, you know, not like you? Let's find that out beforehand. Does that make sense? Right. That's why we've got the, the networking Thursday thing. And oh, by the way, every day of the week ain't Thursday. You hear me? Like, I know most of you guys that are watching this have been around for a while, and this is kind of like your Friday night routine. You guys get it. I'm not talking to you, okay? Not every day of the week is Thursday. Okay. Saturday, there's a lot of people that are like, uh, I ain't fucking going to do the be on Facebook live thing. Okay. You're leaving money on the table. Get over yourself. Do some practicing. Do some practicing that's not live on Facebook. Do some practicing where it's not recorded. Ooh, interesting. Numbers drop a little bit. I like that. Good. Brenda, yeah, like Sharon said, you and Tasha should connect. What's up, Amy Smith in the house? How are you tonight? Just pull him. Pulliam is watching with us. Awesome sauce. Grabbing a glass of wine. Good. Is it baby bab? Is that how, like... You've been in our world for a while and I'm a phone guy, right? And so when I got somebody's name wrong on the other end of the phone, that first impression thing, the perception of like, really kind of bothers me when I butcher somebody's name, B E A is that Bay and then B Bab, baby Bab. Is that, am I on point with that? Jackie, check this out. Um, I dropped this little gold nugget in Guerrilla Army Nation earlier today, um, I'm going through a process where I am upping the stakes on my own personal development and my ability to take action. And I'm retooling my internal self-language, my self-talk. I'm rewording goals to believe, uh, believable to execute, right? Is it a believable to execute? That has a different meaning and a different connotation than goal right? <clears throat> Just thought I would throw that little nugget out there. That's me. That's me. Okay, cool. So the reason for the treasure hunt is to bring people into your world and, um, fuck, I just, it was on the end of my tongue. It's the same thing you do when, when you've got a fish tank that's set up and you bring in new fish, you quarantine the new fish for a little bit and you acclimate them. That's the word I'm looking for. Acclimate. The treasure hunt's objective is to acclimate somebody to our world and either they're a fit or they're not. And before they come into the group and then they feel bad and they're out there and like all press is good press, believe you me. But if they don't take the time to like figure out what we're about before they whip it out and, and everybody gets pissed and they're booted out of the group, they don't even know why. Guess who gets the fucking, the private message? 
right? You know how many fucking private messages I've gotten in the last six months from people that were booted out of the group because they're like, a fucking warning would have been nice. Yeah. Like I don't respond to these and I don't accept them, but I'm thinking, yeah, before you like walked into my house and whipped it out in front of my wife and kids, it would have been nice if you fucking like looked around a little bit before you did that, you stupid fucker. Like I have a level of expectation of adult humans that maybe I guess is unacceptable. So part of the reason for creating the treasure hunt was to help people get acclimated to our world before we let them out into gen pop. Right. I mean, we all want a group that's nice and cozy with lots of people, lots of interaction, high quality, lots of engagement. Let's all like come in here and build relationships and, you know, really fuck there's, let's call it 9,500 people in here. Let's call it 8,000 people in here that are active and engaged. There should be damn near everything that you need to get your business to exactly what you want with the people that are already here. You just need to build those relationships and understand who does what. None of us can do that when there's 30 fucking threads a day and, and 28 of them are recess threads. Right? And then there's the people that come into the group and they're like, you know, the... I'm the fucking bomb, man, right? I can teach you all how to do this one thing. Here's a value post. Go fuck yourself. Unless you take the time to like figure out what we're all about and it's in the right context for the group and it's done the right way. Oh, and you did the encashment process to where you built relationships and all of that stuff beforehand. So people know who you are. People know an, enough of what you're about to then when they see that giant fucking value bomb, they're like, this guy can be trusted. This guy gets us. We know enough about this guy that he's awesome sauce. I'm interested in paying attention and seeing what he has to say, right? Perception, first impressions are huge, right? Do you want your first impression to come off to where everybody's like, uh, no, because then your third and your fourth and your eighth impression, people are like, mm, whatever. They don't even fucking look at it. Or do you want people to actually like go, oh, there's, there's some awesome sauce here. Every time Jeff Brody posts, there's some fucking rad stuff here. Every time Anna posts, there's some rad stuff here. Every time Ben Perry posts, there's some rad stuff there. Right? That's what we all want. Okay, cool. Moving on. I should be the bee gorilla. So Landon, B's name is pronounced B. Oh, B. Let's see here. Yes, acclimate. Yep, Mark. B. I'm from Europe. When I moved here, everyone just called me B. So B kind of came out of it. BB Bab. I have a question for you, B. It seems like there's a lot of English people and people from the UK that really dig me in my style. If you, if you know what it is that I'm talking about, is that something that you can verbalize and put in the comments? Like, seriously, there's, there's 15 people from the UK that have bought our stuff. That's a huge percentage of, of the people in my mind, maybe I'm wrong. They seem like drawn to us, to me, my personality. Can you verbalize what it is? Yes, Jeff, you are absolutely welcome. Thank you for taking the time to build a relationship with our world and making our world your world. I am out of the know on what encashment is. Saw it all over the page, but couldn't figure out or find what it is. Okay, check this out. Beard game strong as fuck. They're jealous. That's funny. Um, Jackie, there is a um, there is a cheat sheet that is almost ready for this. And here is what I mean when I say encashment. Okay, here's the the short. It's the humor. Uh, makes sense because I really like British humor. <clears throat> You're eccentric enough. Makes sense. Encashment. Okay. People 
who like kind of figure out the game of, oh, if I can get people to engage with me in these Facebook groups, or if I can get people to engage with me in my content on my Facebook page or my personal profile, if I can get them to engage, have a conversation with me, then it's really easy for me to determine if we're a fit to work together. And in that case, if it makes sense, tell them how they can buy my shit without saying, here's how you buy my shit. Engagement. It all comes down to engagement. Engagement is the initial stage of interaction, right? Engagement, right? We made eye contact across the room. We engaged. Interaction. Now we're having a drink together and talking and we're like getting to know each other, courting. Who? it totally makes sense. This is going to be awesome. Without a doubt, I'm going to love having breakfast with him or her tomorrow morning. And I can totally see us like on the ski slopes in three months together. And this is fucking perfect. Doing business together. Make sense? Engagement, interaction, dating. And when it becomes an awesome fucking client relationship, now you get married to that client. And it's fucking perfect, right? That's what we're all trying to get. So engagement done the right way, we've termed encashment. And what I mean by that, and here's how this works. When you go into a Facebook group, you look around, you use some social acuity to understand how things are done here. What are these fuckers like? What's the general vibe in this place? Do I fit? Are there people in here that I would probably want to work with? Like, is it interesting? Are these guys like my people? Social acuity. Cool. You say yes to that in your head because you've looked around and you've taken the time to do that. Now you go start reacting to some things that you agree with. You're building presence. Just reactions, likes, hearts. Only on the things that you agree with that you're like, yep, I agree. Yep, that's me, right? You do that for a couple of days, right? And then you go in and short comment and in that same group that you found that you're kind of a fit and it, yeah, this place makes sense. I think this is for me. This, yep, these people are my people, right? I dig the message here. I support the message that's being done here. I like the way these guys operate in this community. You short comment, you find something that you're like, that's, yep, fucking badass. So post that. Yeah, that's fucking badass, right? I totally agree. That's rad. Short comment. Now you're starting to build some awareness. The people that you commented on their post or you commented on their comment, they're becoming aware of you. So are the group leaders and the group owners and the group mods, right? Cool. You wait a little bit and you keep doing the short commenting thing. You're starting to build some relationships. You're continuing to build your awareness, your sphere of awareness in that community. And then Instead of going in and putting in a 19 fucking paragraph value bomb that nobody sees because you didn't take the time to do that, you don't do that, you go in and you do a little post, right? You've built some awareness and you've got some presence in that group and you do a two or three sentence post and it's relative and the context is specific and it's only posted in that one community. And you do that for a little bit maybe a few days, maybe a couple of weeks. It's not every day. It's not several times a day, right? Don't come in and take over the conversation because nobody likes that. You have something valuable and pertinent and informative or an actual well thought out high quality question, right? Like, okay, I won't even get into that rant. And then after you've done that for a while and you've got these short posts, right? And people are reacting and engaging with you, engage with them, right? Somebody took the time to comment on your, on your post, engage with them. You're carrying on the conversation. Now, after a little bit, it's continued to be a fit. You've built awareness in that group and people are liking you and people are liking what you do. Then you go in and you put in a value post, but it's not 19 paragraphs. It's like three right? Give them the short 30,000 foot overview of the awesome knot, awesome sauce, right? And you don't do that all the time. Once a week's more than plenty. That's encashment. 
because what you've done is, is you've given people the ability to see that you respect them in the space and you're not like kicking down the front door and whipping it out. Right. And then you go, Oh, there's women and children in here. Sorry. I thought this was like where, you know, the donkeys from Pinocchio in the old cartoon from the eighties. I didn't realize this wasn't the pool hall for the 19 year old kids. Right. And people are like, every time she fucking comments, every time he comments, every time there's a post done by that person, it's like worthy of paying attention to in cashment because the people that are paying attention are the people that want to engage with you beyond just that. Yes. There's some people that will just engage with you every time you post and they are not your ideal client, but the people that are in that group that are your ideal client, they see that they're watching all of the high quality clients take their fucking time, right? They make decisions quickly, but they validate those decisions over a little bit of a period of time. You guys are all on fucking social media, the internet to make money in cashment. Does that make sense? Is that like, did I lay that out enough? Good for you, Nikki. Go write that offer, dude. The UK culture is more advanced than the US. That's why. Interesting. Interesting. I honestly, I don't know enough, but like there's, there's enough of, uh, there's enough of the angry 13 year old boy mentality here in the U S that I would not have much of a problem disagreeing with that though. I don't know what's accurate. Just realize this group doesn't use the word connect like some of the sleazy entrepreneurs. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad that you brought that up, Emily. Let me read the rest of this. I ended up hating that word. Thanks for bringing the words engagement and conversations into back into the world. Yep, totally. Here's the deal. It's all about relationships. And I do say on a fairly regular basis, it's all about connecting. However, my interpretation of that word and what most people are using it for are totally different. I had a conversation with, um, with a lady three months ago, two months ago, who is in the millennial space and all of the crush it bros and the hustle bros are using this term scaling intimacy. You know, how fucking stupid that is. Like, do you have any idea how fucking moronic that statement is scaling intimacy? Some of them have a legitimate agenda and their intent is accurate. But the vast majority of the people that are using that word are trying to say, how do I build a 10 year marriage with kids and all of the in-laws love both people in that couple and it's fucking phenomenal. And everybody around them is jealous because that relationship is perfect. That's intimacy. Scaling intimacy means how do I get to that in 15 minutes? How do I get to that with 700 people in three weeks? Nope. Engaging, right? Met, eyes across the room. We made eye contact, right? Initial interaction on Facebook. I recognize that you recognized me, right? Whether it's in... PM or it's in a group or it's on your profile or whatever, that first initial contact is engaging. You've engaged each other. Taking it beyond that, now you begin to interact. Cool. Well, when you engage, you've made a connection. If we continue to connect, we're connecting, right? And if we decide to do business together, we have connected, right? The hustle bros and the, the crush it bros are using terms in the wrong way. Much like people, in my opinion, use the term sales in the wrong way. 
if you weren't on this at the very beginning of this, I'm going to repeat something that I said, and then I'm going to get back into, um, I'm going to give you guys a little something that have stuck around. Sales, the term is the very end of that interaction where we have a conversation to determine if you buy my shit. It's a little itty bitty tiny thing. What most people think is called sales is this giant process that is prospecting. I can teach you sales all day long. Here it is. Hi, Bob. What is it that you need, Bob? Cool, Bob. I can, I can do that for you. Do you have any questions, Bob? No? Cool. Here's how you get it, Bob. That's sales. That's selling, right? And I'm, I'm being really overly simple for a reason. Bob is only ever the right Bob and the easy to sell Bob if he was the right prospect to begin with. That's the needle in the haystack. That's why when you cold call, you dial 100 phone numbers, you get four potential clients. Does that make sense? Newbie and first time commenter, Landon, how do you drive engagement without coming off as disingenuous or pandering? Hello, Hugo. Welcome to our world. Have you chosen your gorilla hashtag yet, my friend? Ugh, I hate Gary V. I'd love to hear Landon Porter's views, though. Great question, Charles. Hmm, let's see here. <clears throat> Charles, I'm not sure if it's been brought up in a live before, but Landon, what's your opinion on Gary Vaynerchuk and the business advice that he gives to crush it bros? Um, sure, totally. I'm going to answer Hugo's question first, and then I will dive into Gary V. Landon, how do you drive engagement without coming off as disingenuous or pandering? You know that sales thing that I just went through, the sales piece of it's really easy. The hard part is the prospecting. Cool. Well, take, take that and put it into getting engagement in a Facebook group. I don't drive engagement. It's not hard for me to get people to engage with me, right? My prospecting process over the last 12 months has really qualified the right people into my group and into my world. And the people that are paying attention are the right prospects for me. They're wanting to engage on their own. I'm doing me. I'm being me. I'm talking about a topic that I'm passionate about. Okay. Yes, there's more pieces to this. But my prospecting process over the last 12 months has got us to this point where people on their own want to engage. Those who engage have determined, I feel safe to engage here. I get what's going on here. I'm building relationships here. This is like my second home, right? They're engaging on their own. I'm just doing me and being me. That's how I drive engagement. I constantly and consistently show the fuck up exactly how I am by being exactly who I am. And I'm having a conversation with my tribe. That's how I do it. Hope that I hope that answers your question. Welcome to the jungle, Hugo. I don't know how long that you've been here um, in the in the group, but you might be a fit. Cool, Charles. I'm not sure if it's been brought up in a live before, but Landon, what's your opinion on Gary Vaynerchuk? Here's my opinion of Gary Vaynerchuk. I have watched him and I have um, at times binge watched him depending on where he was at in his journey since 2006 or two, yeah, two, yeah, 2007, 2006. I was watching his Wine Library TV episode two 15 minutes after it was uploaded, I had interactions with Gary on Twitter that day or the following day. I've watched him on occasion since. My take on his advice for the, and the business advice that he gives to the Crush It Bros 
if you watch Gary V, if you actually pay attention and listen to his message, and I'm not saying that you haven't, this is for everybody, so I can put this into context. If you actually watch what he says and you actually listen to, to his advice is, don't be like me. Be like you. If you are naturally like me, 18 hours a day, five days a week, killing it, long-term, big, huge vision, then cool, do that if that's you. If, if you are a seven-hour workday person and you're going to go to every one of Sally's recitals and work-life balance is fucking huge to you and you want to make a hundred grand a year and that's you, then do that, right? That's what his actual advice is. He's really good at fucking crushing it. So his advice to the people that are actually naturally like that, who fucking crush it, bro, I think is totally fucking spot on. Here's my problem with it. And it's the same problem that I have with most people who are crush it bros are the same people who are sales people, bro, is this. They're not actually being who the fuck they are. I'm a t-shirt and jeans guy, right? I'm not a suit guy. If I like you enough to put on a suit and go to your wedding or your funeral, I do that on my own because I've got respect. But I'm not going to go put on a fucking suit because that ain't me. But if you're a suit guy, right? You get up at 5.05 a.m. every day, seven days a week. You get up, take a shower, brush your teeth, shave, put on a three-piece suit, and go to an office, and that's exactly who you actually are? Fucking awesome sauce. More power to you. And I totally got love and respect for that. If you're actually being you. Like my consumption, digestion, and implementation stuff, I go through periods where I'm like fucking crushing it, bro. 18, 20 hours a day for two, three, four weeks straight. And then I go through a period of time where I'm sleeping eight, nine, 10 hours, bro, and taking naps in the middle of the day and like thinking about stuff and not really working at all. And then I go through periods where I'm like, six hours of sleep every night for like six months at a time. And I'm doing like nine or 10 or 12 hours of work a day, seven days a week. And then, right. Like that's my process. I think Gary is probably the most insightful person when it comes to our society and our culture globally, as it applies to what we are doing with our time and our attention. And if you watch and if you pay attention to what we're doing to actually market, we're following a lot of his advice. I think as far as that goes, mid game, long game, be a media company, top of funnel, brand awareness, bring them in through your qualification process. I never have to sell my stuff to anybody ever, right? Everybody wants it but everybody that's everybody that wants it are my ideal for me fucking clients. They're the people that go, fuck, holy shit, this is amazing. Where do I put my money? Right? Now, you go back five or six years ago when he was like giving people a hard time about not sleeping and stuff. Yeah, I totally thought he was a fuckhead. Like, no, dude, that's for you and that's for a certain percentage of the population because that's exactly how they are. That's correct. But to be telling people that they're wrong and they're stupid and they shouldn't be like fucking sleeping and hanging out with their kids. And like, if you want to fucking go watch TV, dude, go watch TV. And then he started to like get it and shift where he was like, oh, it's not everybody that shouldn't do that. It's the people that come to me and bitch about how their life is X, Y, Z, but they fucking watch like 19 hours a day of these five shows. I totally agree with his message on that. Like if you're not going to fucking do the thing, then don't bitch about it. Like if you're okay with what you've got, then fucking go do whatever it is that you want to do. Right. But the people that are like, eh, it's fucking sucks and I can't do it. And they spend four or five hours a day watching TV or doing something that has nothing to do with their business. The most common question that I get from people that have not escaped their nine to five who also have kids is, where do I find the fucking time? 
Well, those who want it will make it happen. I had kids. I had a full-time job, right? I spent almost all of my excess time doing one of two things, being with my family or studying my craft. What's my craft? Marketing, sales, right? Do I watch TV? Yes. Do I watch movies? Yes. Do I watch TV more than, and when I say TV, I mean YouTube, right? Stuff on Amazon Prime because we don't have like cable TV because we don't watch TV. Do I watch stuff like that? Yeah. What is it that I'm watching? Stuff that furthers my career and my knowledge base, right? Let's see here. That's funny, Brenda. What Bob's comment in here to see what his question was. <laughs> funny, funny. Yeah. Um, I'm a sales guy and I've done a lot of, um, what's the term? I've done a lot of, uh, oh, Mark, if you're still watching, what's the term? Role playing, right? Sales conversation, role playing. And Bob, the prospect. Ben Perry. Oh, did I just do that? I just did that, didn't I? What's up, home skillet? Tabitha. Hello, Tabitha. Have we have we engaged and interacted before? Like, welcome. That helps a lot. Thanks so much, Landon. You're welcome, Hugo. Like, I mean, hopefully it was some qualifying for you. Is this for you or not? And I hope you got what you were looking for. Fantastic. You love Gary as a person. I can't get past some of his Gary V personality here his message. And I'm the person that gets along with everyone chameleon. I dig that. I think you're one of the first people that's brought up that term chameleon. I got so good at the sales thing that I actually became a chameleon, which most people can't do. Most people find themselves, they can really deal with these people, East Coast, New Yorker types, and people from Florida and people from Nevada. And that's like who they can deal with. And then there's other people that really can do well with California and Texas. And that's the people that they do well with. And then there's people that do really well with the people in the South, right? And that's the people they deal with. I could deal with all of them right? Didn't like it, right? I, I had my people that I could deal with, but being a chameleon, yep. Um, here's the deal with Gary. My natural personality and my natural demeanor is very similar to his. I am on fire when I'm on my thing, right? I use the same language. I'm very interested in the same thing. I'm interested in how you guys fucking communicate with each other. It fascinates me it also pisses me off a lot of the time, but that's the, that's the thing that fascinates me is, is how humans interact with each other. It's, it's, he likes to see what people do with their attention. Cool. I'm not so interested in that. What interests me is, is when you have an interaction with another human being and then you're like, how the, why the fuck did they not buy my shit? And I watch the conversation. I go here and here and here and here and here and here and here. Right. And then, oh, by the way, you were too focused on your shit that you wanted them to buy that you didn't really pay attention to their shit. And if you would have brought that person on as a client, they would have been a fucktard. And you wouldn't have liked them after a couple of weeks or a couple of months. Right. That fascinates me. There's no you, you are than you. Seuss wisdom. Yes, Kelly, that is accurate. Yeah, Justin, I agree with that. Again, going back the five or six years ago when he was wearing the beanie hat and it was like flipped back in the back. Like I was like, eh. right? Like I said, when I started talking about this, certain segments of where he was at over the last 10 or 12 years have been very interesting to me and I've gotten a lot out of that. My favorite marketer personality of all time, uh, Frank Kern, 
there's been a couple of times in the last, I don't know, I've been following him since what, 2002, 2003, right before he became an internet marketer, like publicly. Um, there's been a couple of stretches of him that I was like, eh, this is part of the deal. Lauren and I were talking today how you thought it was funny I was wearing a blazer at the live event. If it's you, do do the thing, right? I got nothing but love and respect for you, Ben, right? Like if it was your thing to wear a fucking tutu and a wife beater to do your thing, like do it, right? Pink ballerina shoes, like if that was your thing, right? No, what's your thing? Dressing up like Captain Jack. And I dig that. Yep, totally. Here's my big main message. I'm going to whip it out for you. Be your own weird ass self and own that shit 100%. Just fucking do you. There ain't nobody on this planet that can do you more than you can do you. Right? Does that make sense? Just fucking be who you are. And be okay with expressing that. I don't care if you're shy. Figure it out. Do a Facebook Live. Get unshy. Right? Be your weird fucking self. And if your weird fucking self is there is no fucking way I am ever doing a Facebook Live, awesome sauce. Own that shit. Own it. Right. Good night, Amy Smith. Oh, wait, she's saying good night to Justin. Yeah, Andy Frizzella is good too. Thanks, John. Peace out, Cub Scout. I hate sleep and food, so fucking inconvenient. I love sleep and I love food. I am so sorry to hear that. I mean, you do you, by all means. <clears throat> I don't know. I feel like you and Ben Perry are leaders like Pat Flynn just seems so much more authentic. It's because you resonate with us. This is the entire message on the prospecting thing. Figure out who it is that you like and then go attract them by being exactly who the fuck you are. Right? Like that's the message. I like Pat Flynn, but every time and I haven't watched him in a long time, so this could be totally unfounded and, and no longer accurate. Before I get to that, there's probably a bunch of people on here watching now that weren't on, on the, at the beginning. I am going to be using Facebook stories to drop some fucking gold because that shit only sticks around for 24 hours. And I'm essentially doing an experiment to see who's paying attention. If you're watching this and you didn't hear me say this earlier and we're not friends and you're not paying attention to my stories, go send me a friend request and pay attention to my stories. If you like making money and you're interested in marketing and what it is that we teach here you think is cool. Okay. Um, I used to watch Pat Flynn and he always seemed to me like he was on a three day bender on Coke. He's super knowledgeable. He's got a really high level of skill set when it comes to marketing and branding and making money and the guy's brilliant. But his personality is always like, you know, and his eyes are all red, like, like out here, they're all red because like he's been up for fucking three days and it's like, it's just, after a while, I couldn't anymore. I think he's fucking rad. I can't do him. Self-selected TV five to six years ago. Wasn't he wearing a suit? I'm seeing a trend with what you're saying and what he's been preaching. Yep. <clears throat> I watched the Golden Girls. I'm a sucker for B. Arthur. I used to be too when I was younger. My grandmothers, both of them, watched that show for a long period of time. Uh, 
Okay. I think I'm way far back on the comments, but are you a karma chameleon? That's funny. Jeff, I totally agree and hear you. I could, I could talk like Texas, Oklahoma, down south, back east, Boston. Yep. I just bought a great new book today, already on page thirty-five. Yep. Ben's a reader. I need to watch it. I need to. I need to like see it. Watching others interacting too. I'm constantly just looking at conversations. Yep. I am like way far back. I'm going to scroll forward and if I miss a, something that was important to somebody question wise and I don't get to it, repost it, do shots before lives, but not too many. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jeff, I totally agree. Everyone just wants to be someone else. We need more people being themselves. Yep. Okay, here we go. I got to the bottom of it. I've dealt with insomnia for a good 10 years. Yeah, I am totally like my, my perfect sleeping pattern would be like 2 or 2.30 a.m. to like 7 would be perfect for me. It just doesn't, it doesn't work all the time. Remember the old school forums where when you come in or leave, everyone says hi and bye tonight. Felt like that. Super glad I caught it tonight. Awesome sauce. Yeah, it's like late for you right? Are you, you're in the UK right now? Fuck, it is really late or really early. This is by far favorite Friday night show. Love the interaction here. Awesome sauce. Yeah, totally rad. There's 36 fucking people that are watching. If you're watching this and you weren't around earlier when I said, Hey, post your gorilla hashtag in the comments, do that. Do that. Okay, let's get back to what I was talking about a little bit ago about the treasure hunt. You're welcome, Kelly. Thank you for sticking around and, and interacting, right? 3.45 a.m., 2.45. Holy shit, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Curly gorilla. Curly Q gorilla. Yep. Our Amanda Rutherford. Wait, wait, wait for it. Holy fuck, what is it? Like 3 a.m., 5? No, it's got, it's got to be later than that. Peace out, Amy Smith. I dig the hashtag, B. That's your hashtag. That's it. That's it. That's rad. Not got one yet, Gorilla. Six forty-five PM here in Seattle. Amanda, you're in Seattle. Ah, got it. Cool. <clears throat> Pardon me while I rehydrate a minute. Okay. <clears throat> The whole purpose of doing what it is that we do is to find, then attract the people that could be our ideal client. This group, this Facebook group is our community. Many of you will go, this is awesome. This is awesome. This is awesome. Where do I put my money? Right? Right. For a $97 thing or a $297 thing or for a $997 thing or a $3,500 thing or a $10,000 thing. Awesome. This group is way more than just a marketing channel. We are interacting with and conversing with our ideal target market. <clears throat> Many of you in here are an awesome part of our community, but you're not our ideal client avatar and probably never will be. 
there's many of you in here that are as good of a marketer as we are. And you're here learning to see how we do things different or you're here for the community aspect or whatever. And then there's many of you that don't even have a craft yet and may not ever, right? Like, let's be real. There is a certain percentage of our group and I would like to think probably 30 to 40% of the people that are currently in our group are our ideal client avatar for our current course. That's probably accurate. Um, the treasure hunt and getting back to the Facebook group thing for those of you that have a Facebook group or those of you who want to create your own tribe, here's what we've done. Like, like in the last couple of weeks, we've had some people that are like, ah, like it's, it's too much. It's too much like a cult, right? Like we leveraged the fuck out of that terminology Let's find out where the boundaries at. Let's find out where the parameters at with that. And then we bring it in just a little bit to where it doesn't feel like that. What have we done? We've gathered our tribe and then we've engaged our tribe and then interacted with our tribe. And then our tribe has become our tribe. The purpose of the, um, the treasure hunt is to bring people up to speed quickly. It's essentially the same process we are developing outside of the group in a slightly different way on a slightly different scale to attract more of our tribe. Okay. Follow me. Go back to the email sequence thing. If you do email marketing, well, you attract somebody to a thing, you trade them their, contact info for a thing. And if that thing is decent and they opened it and they opened your first email and they like it and they get the message and it all makes sense and they get down further in the path, you're building a relationship. It's a relationship funnel, right? Follow me on the relationship funnel thing. Top of the funnel, brand awareness, right? As people come through that funnel, they get more acclimated to what it is that you do and who it is that you are and they validate what they need in the result that they're looking for against what it is that you seem to know about it. And the better that gets, the further down the funnel they go. And when they come out the other end, they're the ones going, I want it. I need it. I know what it is. I know I can trust you. I know how much it costs. I know what to expect where do I put my money? Right? If we do what we do correctly, we never have to cold outreach for clients. Cold outreaching for strategic partners, people that are your peers or the next level up. Yes, there is some cold outreach, but it's not like what most of you think. And it's not like what, what almost everybody else out there is teaching. The presence, awareness, authority thing that I went through earlier with encashment is how you build that relationship and you get that relationship off the ground. Ben, if you're still watching, I did this with Ben. Nick, Nick and, and Courtney went off to do their Friday night show. It's the same process that I, I did to build a relationship with him. It's the same process I did with um, Nathan Frazier, right? Yes, there is some cold outreach there, much higher level than what most people are doing, trying to get one client at a time. They're all funnels because you can create that shit and then it's there, right? I can only have a conversation with one person that I don't know at a time. But if I create content like this Friday Night Live, do you have any idea how many people are going to see this Friday Night Live after it's done? right? Probably another 500 to a thousand, maybe 1500 people over the next month. will see this Friday night live. Most of them won't watch very much of it. Some of them will watch a good portion of it. And then there's a few that are going to go watch the whole fucking thing. It's the few that we're after, right? It's the ones that go through a whole Friday night live that PM me on Saturday morning and say, okay, I'm brand new in the group. I'm brand new to, but it's like, you guys are my people. I want the fucking course. Where's it at? 
that make sense? I know what it is. I know what I need. I know, like, and trust you. I want the thing. I know what it costs. Where, like, where do I put my money? This content that we're creating outside of the Facebook group in these content funnels, in the relationship funnel, all of those little content funnels together are our relationship funnel. We're using personality marketing, which is what I do, what we teach. Once it's out there and created, that piece of content has all of those conversations on your behalf. Does that make sense? You guys get this? You understand that? Cool. The few, the proud, the gorilla. I dig it. I have a mustache hair that must be curled the wrong way. It keeps tickling me. <clears throat> Went through my data this month listening to past FNLs while driving. Worth it. That's awesome sauce, Emily. That was me. Woke up and texted you. Yep, totally. Mm, banana Rita. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. All of them. Ash, how do the gorillas get banana Rita's? When non-seasoned peeps enter an actual funnel, they just want to buy all the things speaking from experience. Oh my God, where are the banana Ritas? Somebody brought up banana Ritas up here further. I'm here for the bananas. Yep. Slapdashery, this is actually pretty sophisticated. Yes, Linda, my dear. Yes, it is. John, yep. Um, I hydrate quite frequently. Uh, what's up, Wanda? Been shopping at Kroger's. That's funny. Okie dokie. LOL sounds like me. Yeah, Jackie. That's like, right? That's how, that's how it goes. And that's how it works. And that's kind of the point, right? <clears throat> I'm not going to make any bones about it. We sell shit, right? We are actively marketing the things that we sell all the fucking time. I ain't got a problem selling it. I have a problem with the way most people sell their shit right? And like, I'm going to be really fucking clear about it. The vast majority, north of 85% of the people that have a thing to sell are fucking shit bags in the way they go about selling their thing. Every once in a while, we get a fucking moron that comes into the group and they're here for five or 10 minutes. There was some lady that came into our group this last week and posted this big, long, you guys are fucking weak and suck and, and you're scared of, no, I don't want people in my world that are scared to ask for the sale. I want people in my world that are interested in actually having integrity and in dealing with people that they actually want to deal with and finding people that it makes total fucking sense for them to buy their shit. Right? There's not much worse than somebody who is actually too weak to ask for the sale except for somebody who is willing to consciously stepping on somebody and overcoming somebody and forcing them to buy something because that individual is too weak to say no thank you. That is bullshit. Right? That's the message here. I can fucking take money from almost all of you. Doesn't make sense for more than half of you. I'm not interested in working with most of those people. Like, let's be real. That's my whole thing, right? Buy the course, never have to interact. Totally. To an extent, right? Hire me for coaching. Mm -uh. Right? High standards, high expectations, boundaries, high quality. There's too many people out there teaching people how to get clients and do sales that are teaching manipulation and coercion. That's old school. That's reptilian. That's 
fuckery. You don't want those people as clients because the people that are too weak to say no thanks are shitty, awful, nasty fucking clients. And they're never the ones that pay high ticket. And those of you that are in our world, I want to earn high ticket, high quality, fewer clients, much greater impact. Does that make sense? Right. Like if you're in real estate, you don't want to sell somebody a tent. You want to sell them a home. If you're a coach, you don't want somebody to pay you $100 an hour one time. You want somebody to pay you $3,500 for six or eight calls. Anyways, some people piss me off. What's up, Joe? I have quite two different jobs last year because of that. Yeah. Totally. From what I've seen, a lot of the people that go about in a crap way don't have content they're proud of. They just pirate Udemy course and call it a day. Yeah. Integrity. Yep. I've went through 750 mil just watching this. Holy shit balls, dude. Oh, of water. Okay. I was like, Oh my God. And your eyes are still open. Holy shit. I'm kidding. I think sophisticated as fuck is the term. If you are actually like, <clears throat> there's two sides to this. Why on earth would you land and go on and do a Friday night live? That's hours long. Like you're giving away too much info. No, I'm not. I'm leveraging the thing that I'm good at. I'm demonstrating what it is that we teach. If you're watching this from, I'm a marketer also standpoint, and you're actually watching what I'm doing. I'm telling all of the people that shouldn't buy my shit to not do so. I'm telling all of the people that should totally buy my stuff that yes, this is the right thing for you, but I'm telling them that in a way that I'm giving them enough information to come to their own conclusion to where we haven't had anybody ask for their money back. Like that's saying a lot, right? Awesome sauce. It's been two hours. I love you guys. My dinner's here. So I'm going to go eat my dinner. I hope you got something out of this Friday Night Live. And uh, stick around because the jungle is about to get really interesting. There's some changes coming that we haven't announced publicly. Peace out, Cub Scouts. Have a great night.